Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, uh, back to the uh, scrap and recycling talk. Um, this video is going to be mainly about copper. Copper is graded into number one, number two, and if you get really picky yards, into number three. Number three is going to be your real fine stuff like Christmas lights, telephone wires, stuff like that. When you get into uh, copper, basically what you're going to have is number one copper, number two copper. Number one copper is going to be a pencil lead, like a uh, wooden pencil, number two pencil that you used to get in school. It's going to be uh, that big in diameter, usually the kind where you got to take a pair of pliers or something, you know, to move it, where smaller copper, you can just twist it with your fingers, that type thing. Um, copper is uh, number one, is obviously uh, going to be like Romex, which is household wiring and uh, pretty heavy duty wire like that. Number two wire is going to be in your drop cords, um, extension cords, you know, stuff like that. Anything smaller than a pencil lead is usually going to be number two. And uh, then if you get into stuff like that, the best thing to do is to strip it down. They sell industrial strippers, which are pretty expensive. Um, a razor knife, honestly, what I use to strip down wire is a linoleum knife. I found they work really good and you're kind of a little bit less likely to cut yourself. When you get into um, industrial copper, uh, anything that's going to be running like three phase and uh, stuff like that, it, even like uh, bar copper and uh, stuff for real high voltage is going to be usually downgraded to number two copper. Um, if you get like piping, anything like that, um, any fittings, even if they haven't been uh, used for solder or paint or corrosion, anything like that is going to go as number two. Um, usually if you just take a grinder or like a bench grinder or something like that or a piece of sandpaper just you know knock off the stuff and you're gonna be able to cash it in as number one when you get into um, copper uh, usually non ferrous I had mentioned this in a previous video usually non ferrous material which is gonna be um, anything that does not stick to a magnet on the uh, off chance that it's gonna be stainless you know, magnetic stainless. We talked about that in a uh, prior video. Uh, but basically, if you get into um, copper and stuff, the cleaner it is, the more money you're going to get for it. If it's got anything where, say, you got a bunch of um, copper fittings and everything, and you take it into a recycling center, junkyard, or anything like that, what their whole purpose is, is they're going to look at your material and try and buy it as the cheapest possible price that they can. So if you have brass fittings and copper fittings and a bunch of stuff mixed together, they're going to buy it real cheap as a breakage or like a mixture price. When you get into, um, I covered the industrial. I'm trying, I basically the reason I'm doing all these videos is because I have so much knowledge when it comes into scrap metal, recycling, anything like that. And I'm just trying to get it basically talked out to you guys so and my hopes for these videos is because I'm hoping that you know if there's somebody out there that's looking into getting into recycling center starting up a scrapyard or anything like that I want to give you the knowledge that I've got because I've got a lot of years in and I can pretty much identify any metal from A to Z aluminum to zinc and uh, I just kind of want to share the knowledge with you guys so um, when you get into uh, insulated wire First thing you got to do is, like, uh, say Christmas lights or telephone wire or um, drop cords, Romax, we discussed that kind of stuff, okay? First thing you're going to do is look at it and see, okay? Is there a lot there? First of all, the reason the insulated copper goes less than clean copper is because the ratio of when it's stripped down on the insulation. When they're buying that stuff with insulation on it, it may not look like a lot of weight there, but it actually does have. You buy a 50 foot or 100 foot uh, thing of Romex wire, you've got a couple pounds of insulation on there. Plus, they have to pay somebody to sit there and strip it down. So, a lot of times, you want to see if it's really worth it. I would honestly suggest that if you have telephone wire, Christmas lights, stuff like that, about the most I do to set a Christmas lights is pull the bulbs out. Because when you get down to try and strip that stuff down, it's going to be really fine. And it, by the time you get it stripped down, you're virtually going to have nothing for your time of sitting there stripping it. Get into Romex, like household wire and stuff like that, it's worth stripping because it's number one wire. Another trick. 
Did you know that if you have number one wire, if it's really shiny and really heavy duty and really nice looking, like, almost like it looks brand new out of the package where you just stripped it down, do you know that actually goes as bare bright? That's actually worth more money than your number one copper. When you get into uh, stuff like that, even uh, if you're ever stripping down, like say an electric motor, they have open face motors, closed face motors. Open face motors are the ones where you can actually look at the side and you're actually going to be able to see the uh, wire coiled around inside. A lot of times what you need to do before you start stripping that down and start tearing it apart and thinking that, oh, I'm going to have a couple pounds of copper right here. Take a file and stick in there or smack it with a chisel a couple times. What you want to do is get down below the varnish and down below the uh, plating there and see what the base metal is. Base metals are what the actual uh, item is made of. And then you have the plating on top there. And then like uh, with the electric motors, you actually have varnish on the wiring, on the windings. So you want to strip those down and see what you actually are dealing with. Because believe it or not, a lot of the open face motors are considered actual cheap type motors. Like out of um, dryers, washing machines, stuff like that. That are only you know supposed to last so long before they get shredded down. Basically, those um, actually have aluminum windings, and it's actually a copper plating on there. So you don't want to sit there on a whole weekend and strip something like that down and then find out that you did all that work for nothing because if you pull that out, that's going to go as old sheet like I mentioned in a uh, prior video. Old sheet is going to be basically like your uh, junk aluminum. You think of shredder type stuff. You take a load of iron in. And say you have um, bikes, pots and pans, uh, a couple scooters, maybe a couple lawnmowers, um, stuff like that. It's all mixed together. It's just basically junk shredder type stuff. That Scrapyard will usually call that stuff shredder. Where if you get into washers, dryers, stuff like that, uh, kind of like the painted siding and the aluminum, then you're going to be getting into what they call white goods. White goods is going to be appliances, stuff like that. They've got motors in them. They've got compressors in them. You can strip the compressor out and cash that in, although you do have to have a licensed technician to be able to pull the Freon out because that is illegal to let the Freon just leak out. So always have somebody that can actually pull it out from a heating and air conditioning place, refrigerator repair, somebody like that. They can actually pull the Freon out for you. And uh, when you get into that kind of stuff, the back part of a refrigerator should be steel. You're going to have a compressor, obviously. Um, get into aluminum copper radiators, which are in um, air conditioners. They're going to have aluminum fins. They're going to have the copper wire, go the copper um, tubing going in there. And uh, when you get into that type stuff, a lot of people think, you know, I can uh, pull the copper out and cash in the aluminum on one side and have copper tubing for the other. Do you know you're actually going to lose money doing that? Because... An aluminum copper radiator is actually going to be able to be sold as aluminum copper radiator. It's an item, it's the two alloys mixed together, the aluminum and the copper, but you're also going to get more money cashing it in as a radiator. The, about the only thing I've ran into that you can really uh, make the money off of if you hit, get into radiators is um, your auto radiator. And I know everybody's sitting with a car and thinking, oh, I got an auto radiator out there, this, that, and the other thing. Well, you got to look at it first. Is it silver where the fans in, in the middle of it? Is it silver? That's actually going to be an aluminum radiator. If you get an aluminum radiator, you're going to run a magnet around it. The top tank and the bottom tank should be having plastic. So there's actually going to be a steel part in there. So you're going to want to take a sawzall or something of that nature, chop it off. Then you have aluminum. Cash that in as aluminum copper radiator. Or aluminum radiator. Sorry about that. And uh, when you get into, uh, I covered the aluminum copper radiators. Uh, auto radiators, the reason they call them auto radiators is because they're more into the diesel trucks. They're more into the um, older style cars, stuff like that. What that's going to look like is if you look at the actual part where um, the radiator is, where like the fan blows into it to cool your car down, it's going to look uh, kind of black or coppery. And uh, what that is, is actually a, uh, you got a brass tank on the top, brass tank on the bottom. Usually you'll have two, um, like, nipples sticking out where you, uh, where the lines go in there for the cooling. Uh, those are actually going to be steel. If you cut those off and then you can actually cash the tanks in, 
four brass, and then ah, the radiator itself, cash it in. So it's a two for one to make money on that. Uh, see, starters, alternators, stuff like that. You can actually sell those as electric motors. Do you know what the uh, one of the best parts of a vehicle to uh, cash in? You have the uh, wiring harnesses. You have the catalytic converter, you have the uh, rims, aluminum, some are aluminum, some are steel. Uh, Semi-rims, those can weigh up to 89, those usually weigh around 80, 90 pounds a piece. Um, Scrapyard is going to be able to pull those off. Uh, if it's got tires, they can sell those for salvageable used tires. You ever wonder when you go into a uh, tire shop, and most tire shops, you ever wonder how they have the expensive brand new tires and they have used tires? That's where the used tires come from. They go to the scrap yards and you take in a car that say, you know, it's got front end damage or gotten a wreck and it's totaled out. What they do, they're going to bring it in and they're going to pull all the usable parts that they possibly can off. And then they're going to sell those to different places, tire shops, um, you know, different places like that. So uh, they'll pull the hood off, they'll pull the radiator, they'll pull the um, grill out. You know, different stuff like that because then they can actually sell those parts cheaper than the parts store and save you some money. If you're ever looking at getting into a recycle center or junkyard, it is going to take a lot of money to get into it. Uh, meaning for to buy the material, to buy the equipment. Uh, when you get into aluminum cans, you uh, have anywhere from balers, shredders, um, densifiers, blowers. Most smaller yards are going to have blowers. What a blower is, is you dump the aluminum cans into what they call the hopper. goes in between two wheels and the thrust actually flattens the can and blows it up into the semi-trailer. The reason they flatten their cans and crush their cans is so they can get more material onto the loads to make a bigger paycheck. When you get into um, uh, different trying to think here if you get into different uh, types of scrap there's different alloys there's different stuff that's why uh, if you ever look at a junkyard scrapyard recycle center anything to that nature and you actually see where they have say 15 20 different piles sitting around that's why each one of those piles is a different commodity and it's a different alloy which means it's a different price that's why a lot of the scrapyards will just sit and sit on the stuff and you know wait for the price to go up yeah they'll ship a load out here and a load out there just to keep you know their buyers happy and such but other than that they're actually sitting watching the markets and when you get into the junk business you can actually sit back and usually tell within about a month to maybe six months you can kind of see trends and you can kind of see what the prices are going to do there's a lot of secrets in the business and that's why I appreciate everybody that subscribes to this channel because that's one thing I want to do is give you guys the secrets so you guys can make the most off your material. A uh, lot of scrap yards, uh, most of them you have to have a title and registration stuff like that in order to scrap out a car. Uh, if you when you sell them the vehicle with the engine in, they can actually sell that for a refurbished engine. They can sell the doors. They can sell the um, hood trunk. Uh, Basically, whatever is still decent on that vehicle, they can pull off and they can sell to customers that are coming in. Can you make a living as a scrap or recycle? Yes and no. Meaning, the reason why I say yes is if you've got the constant material, say you've got a yard or you've got a recycle center and you've got the money to buy the material, sit on it and, you know, process it and, you know, you've got a continuous supply because you've got people selling the material to you and stuff like that, then yes, you can make a living at it. If you're just an average junker like I am, um, junker, scrapper, I prefer myself to be known as a scrapper because I feel like I kind of know 90% of the alloys and such. And basically the difference, in my opinion, the difference between a junker and a scrapper, a junker is just getting into it and learning the different alloys, learning what you know gets the most money and a scrapper kind of knows what they're dealing with and knows how to get rid of the material and like that but um, a lot of times people will uh, go around and look for copper and when you look for copper there's gonna be a few things that are gonna catch your eye and a few things you need to watch out for number one is copper clad copper and then C L A D copper clad 
what copper clad is is going to be ground rods it's going to be um pretty high voltage copper and uh you know for like outdoors and it's got to go under a lot of pressure and what that actually is makes it copper clad is a uh, ground rod isn't copper what it is is remember how i just said about base metals your base metal on that is going to be steel the plating on that is going to be copper that's why if you take a magnet and bump on it it's going to stick to it anytime you ever have copper and you take a magnet and stick to it or bump a magnet on it and that sticks it's going to be copper clad that's why your magnet in the junk business is your best friend if you get into um, household wire and it's got like a say a silver or um, silver in color but like a sleeve that goes around it a lot of times those are either going to be stainless steel or they're going to be aluminum aluminum is going to be a lot lighter so that would actually if you pulled it off that'd be old sheet aluminum if you get stainless steel then you're going to have to pull it off and there's your magnet again uh, have a magnet and hang it just just to the edge of it and see if it has a slight magnetic pull if it does then it's going to be magnetic stainless if it does not then it's going to be mag or non-magnetic stainless steel the two alloys of uh, stainless a lot of times if you get um, how to tell the difference between aluminum and stainless aluminum is going to be kind of grayer it's going to be just basically there's not going to be any um, I don't want to say tint to it but uh, if you get into stainless, you're going to be able to hold a piece side by side and you're going to see the difference. Piece of aluminum, same size piece of stainless. Number one, it's going to, uh, the aluminum is going to be gray looking. Number two, the uh, stainless is going to be real shiny looking. The uh, stainless is going to have grains in it. Now what I mean by grains is, uh, think of like a machined piece or something of that nature that... Uh, now, I know a lot of you people have uh, seen somebody doing something on like a lathe or like a wood lathe or something like that. Think of the grooves, okay? As that uh, chisel is going around on that piece, it's making grooves and it's machining it down, right? Well, when you look at stainless, it's going to have the same type grains on it. That's how you can tell with that. Aluminum is going to be dull. Stainless is going to be shiny. Another uh, kind of scrapyard trick that I uh, was taught if you get uh, two identical pieces one aluminum one stainless the aluminum is going to be a lot lighter it's going to be about one third of the weight of the stainless steel another thing if you drop a piece of aluminum it's not going to make very much noise if you drop a piece of stainless steel on like concrete garage floor something like that it's going to be a loud loud bracket loud noise stuff like that so that's another reason how you can tell stainless. Stainless is also going to be paying usually right around 20 to 30 cents more a pound than your aluminum will. Aluminum, um, your most valuable, uh, at least the parts that I've seen, your most expensive aluminums are going to be aluminum cans, which is UBCs, used beverage containers. It's going to be um, painted siding off houses, garages, stuff like that, with the backing taken off. A lot of times it's going to have foam or styrofoam glued on there, or it's going to have like a pasteboard uh, glued on there. If it goes into the scrapyard recycle center the way it is, then you're going to be looking at breakage, if they will even buy it, because they're going to have to have somebody sit there with a putty knife all day and scrape the stuff off, throw it in the dumpster. If you uh, get into MLC, Mix Low Clip, Mixed low clip is going to be virtually uh, clean aluminum. It's not going to have any paint. It's not going to have anything on it. It's going to be just basically pure aluminum. And a lot of times it'll um, be like 6,000 series, I'm going to say. Uh, clip aluminum is also going to be your pop tabs. Did you know that pop tabs off your aluminum cans are actually worth a little bit more than your actual aluminum cans? Not a whole lot more, but a, you know, a few cents anyways. And uh, another thing you can tell. If a scrapyard is real nitpicky about uh, the material that you're bringing in, watch and see how they do their aluminum cans. Okay, uh, a lot of times when people are trying to recycle and they're trying to collect uh, aluminum and you know recycle stuff like that in their house, uh, one thing that they don't realize that they can cash in is their cat food cans. 
cat food cans, most of them are aluminum. Okay, and when you get into vegetable cans, the ones with the ribs, those are actually going to be steel. They'll stick to a magnet, uh, which is ferrous. And if you take your aluminum into a place, watch and see if they buy the aluminum cans and dump them in the same pile with the cat food cans or if they separate them. About probably 75-80% of them will actually dump them in a separate pile. And most of the places, if you have cat food cans, they'll actually dump them in with the old sheet aluminum even though they got paint on them and even though uh, your aluminum cans have varnish and paint for the you know advertising for Pepsi, Coke, you know whatever brand of pop it is but it's a different alloy because your siding is going to go outside and be on a house, garage, stuff like that where your aluminum can is going to be you know used it's going to be recycled and be back in your fridge in about uh, 60 to 90 days is the turnaround for an aluminum can. But they actually do have paint and varnish on them. Um, there, there's just so much you can learn as far as recycling, scrapyards, stuff like that. And the biggest thing is not a lot of people want to help people out. They don't really want to let them in on the tricks, the secrets, um, stuff like that as far as, you know, recycling. Because I'll tell you, it's one of the, it took me quite a few years. And um, biggest reason I know so much about recycling and scrap is because I uh, was in a family owned one. And I had an extremely supportive uh, mother, father, and extremely supportive family. And the more I got into it, the more they wanted to get me the answers, to teach me, to get me the research. I did my research. I looked at the materials. And, I mean, there's just so much information that, you know, I'm trying to get out to you guys. And there's just so much information out there. Tricks, all kinds of stuff. And, I mean, who's going to who's gonna teach you? Uh, another thing, if you ever um, work in, like, a machine shop or, you know, I think they would actually use them in, like, a foundry. But it's more of, like, um, say, polishing and taking the burrs and stuff off parts in a foundry. Hence the name machine shop. Uh, another thing to look for is look for carbide inserts. Carbide inserts, uh, they're going to be really, really hard to come by, especially, you know, in the recycling junk stuff like that. But I've seen carbide inserts go from anywhere from 5 to $10 a pound. I mean, you just, you have to know what material you have. You have to know what the best thing to do to it and the best place to take it and you know, so on and so forth. I mean, um, but just put your mind to it. And, you know, if if somebody's watching this video that uh, is really extremely, you know, eager to learn stuff like that, send me a friend request and, you know, I'll be happy to answer the questions to the best of my knowledge and, you know, see if I can't help you out. But um, your batteries, stuff like that, batteries and rims usually go by the piece. Some places will buy them by the pound. Most places will um, buy them by the piece. What you want to do is any place, it's not real good to sell them individually. Like say somebody says, oh, you know, I'll give you $16 a rim or I'll give you $20 a rim when, you know, aluminum prices are sky high. There's a reason that they're doing that. What you want to do is actually weigh them and sell them by the pound. Because if the price is that high on them, the price is going to be good for the alloy. So you want to sell everything per pound by the alloy instead of buying stuff and selling to where you're just saying, okay, I'm, you know, so-and-so is paying this much per item and everything. You actually want to sell stuff by the pound. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. I always, um, I've been trying to get more videos out here. Uh, right now I'm doing about one a week and uh, basically just super, super busy right now. But uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Connect with me on Instagram. Uh, Mikey Dernal on there. Connect with me on Facebook. Um, basically, look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you to each and every one of you that have subscribed to my channel. If you find this uh, video interesting, hit that like button. Let me know uh, Let me know if you got questions. Leave me a comment. So, Alright, well thank you guys very much. And we will see you guys in the next video. Have an awesome rest of your day.